My favorite form of Indigenous artwork is beadwork. I really enjoy beading. I find it relaxing. I enjoy thinking about the designs and the type of materials that I want to use, the look that I want to create. I also really enjoy making beadwork because it's functional artwork. <laughs> Beadwork is a form of traditional Native American artwork. So anywhere around the country, as you visit different tribal nations, you'll see different styles of beadwork. I've been making beadwork since I was about 15. And uh, usually when I design beadwork and I create beadwork, it's for use for cultural events or ceremonies or powwows. So I'm a pow dancer, I'm a fancy shawl dancer. I like to dance jingle and traditional from time to time too but uh, my kids and I, we power dance, and so a lot of the bee work that I make is for our power outfits or our regalia. So when I'm coming up with bead work designs, I often first start with the essence of the, the piece. So I'm really thinking about the person that I'm designing for, and then the use of the final product, and the look that I want to create. I like to lay everything out on graph paper, and then I'll translate that paper to material and I'll sew it down to the material so that I have a pattern to work with and then just start beading. Beadwork is incredibly time consuming. As you look at these different beaded pieces, you know that each one of those beads was hand sewn on. Different artists will have their own techniques and so I like to put on four beads and then go back through two. Every single bead is touched by their artist at least once, but sometimes multiple times, depending how they tack it down. And so the, the larger pieces, they could have hundreds of hours of man time. I would say one of my favorite parts about beading is watching the piece come together, because you have this vision, and a lot of times your vision is pretty true to the final product, but sometimes it's not. And so it's fun watching the piece come together, but actually seeing the colors come together and the, the designs come together. It's really exciting and it provides me a lot of motivation because I'll be like, two more hours and I can have this piece complete and I can finally see what it's gonna look like. When I make beadwork, I make it for really specific purposes. So my husband and I got married about seven years ago. I wore a traditional woodland outfit for our wedding, and then my husband wore a traditional Paiute outfit for the wedding, and then our daughters, they wore some beaded pieces also. My 14-year-old, her name is Siavi, which means wild rose, and so you'll see in those pieces that there's an image of a rose, and then Pasitiva, our little one, her name is wild iris, and so there's an iris beaded into her hair ties. And then in my bandolier bag, there's several different flowers that are beaded in, in that. There's a flower that represents me, my favorite flower, and then my husband's favorite flower. And there's a hummingbird, which symbolizes love. And then going up the straps are the flowers of our kids. So Bishepi, his name is Red Earth. I, I beaded a, a red star-like flower for him. One of the pieces I brought was um, the medallion I made when I graduated with my bachelor's degree. I went to Michigan State University. The medallion's in the shape of the Spartan S with a little sash across with an abbreviation SOC for sociology. And then the year I graduated because I graduated with a bachelor's degree in sociology. So it's common in indigenous artwork to see things like that that are symbols that are very specific to the individual or specific to that ceremony. All of my beadwork that I create has a lot of symbolism. It feels good to wear our traditional artwork because I, I know it comes from a special place. I know that there's a lot of meaning behind the pieces, but I also think it's important as Americans that we see the indigenous people who live here and who've always lived here. Here in Nevada, there are 27 fairly recognized tribes. That's a lot of tribes. <laughs> a lot of tribes. Most states don't have 27 federally recognized tribes. Sometimes when we think about indigenous cultures or indigenous arts, we think about them as history, something that's in the past and something that's not current. There's all kinds of beautiful work that's being done by artists around the country where they're capitalizing on contemporary materials, themes. It's beautiful to see art evolving, even indigenous art, because what's Indigenous is also contemporary.